Be skeptical of anybody telling you to vote and, and not uh, telling you to ask for anything or to tell you to just vote and not to get anything for your vote. That's not how it works. That's not the process. You don't vote just to vote. You vote because you're getting something or your community is getting something. So everybody that's telling you that, man, look at them and say, What's it? what are you getting? Because people that just want you to vote and not ask for nothing, people that's in power, that want you to vote, but don't want you to get anything or not asking for you to get anything economically, they suspect. So there's a debate tonight between Vice President Kamala Harris and the former President Trump. Now, some people look at this debate as a way to determine who they're going to vote for based on policy. But a number of people are going to look at this debate and make a decision based upon how that person makes them feel. And that is the problem that we have here in America. A lot of people are voting for folks based upon how that person makes them feel. We're not supposed to be led by emotions at all. Emotions trick you. Emotions confuse you. You're not thinking rationally when you are using your emotions to lead you. Now, your emotions can inform you. They can give you insight into things. You can have discernment, especially as a Christian. You have discernment. You have peace, peace that lets you know whether or not you should do something or not. But when it comes to something as important as choosing a representative, whether it be president, governor, congress person, Senator, what have you, mayor, you're not supposed to be led by emotions. You're supposed to look at the policy that that person is standing on. But see what has happened in America? People don't understand what it truly means to live in a representative government or a representative democracy. We are a constitutional republic. We are not a democracy. The Democrats have tried their best to lie to the populace and tell them that we are a democracy. See, when people think of a democracy, they think of a popularity contest that is all about which person I like the most. But that's not how you're supposed to choose your government. You choose your government based upon the person that will best represent your interest. It's transactional. They work for you, not the other way around. See, when you vote for somebody in a pageant or for homecoming queen, you're voting for that person's best interest. Your vote does nothing for you. Your vote is based upon popularity and who you like. But when it comes to your, and that is what, see, that is what has happened to America. We have all these different contests like pageants and homecoming queen and all this stuff. And so people get it confused. They get it twisted. And then they approach elections the same way. No, and especially in the black community, we approach elections the same way. We don't approach it like Ice Cube says we should approach it. Yo, what's up? This is your homie Ice Cube. Um, here to talk to my black folks. Um, you know, I just want to be straight up uh, because there's a lot of messages going out uh, about this election. Um, first and foremost, anybody telling you that you gotta vote, that it's your duty, that you have to exercise the right, uh, and that um, people die for you to vote. For one, um, people did die, but nobody walked out their house to go die for you to vote. They were killed by probably some racists uh, that don't want to see us get anything. Um, but what I'm saying that to say this, be skeptical of anybody telling you to vote and, and not uh, 
telling you to ask for anything or to tell you to just vote and not to get anything for your vote. That's not how it works. That's not the process. You don't vote just to vote. You vote because you're getting something or your community is getting something. So everybody that's telling you that, man, look at them and say, What's it? What do you get? Because people that just want you to vote and not ask for nothing, people that's in power that want you to vote but don't want you to get anything or not asking for you to get anything economically, they suspect straight up. Because a lot of people been in place for a long time and we ain't got. And we gonna get what we supposed to get. Period. And anybody asking you not to ask, I wouldn't listen to them. Cause that's the process. Every community asks for what they want. Yes, you should get something for your vote. It's transactional. For example, I am a believer in Jesus Christ. I am a Christian. So therefore I will vote for the candidate whose platform is the closest to my values. I'm not voting for a candidate who looks like me. I don't play identity politics. I don't play that stuff because that's a lie. That's foolishness. That's Marxism. That's something that is being used to get me to vote for something that is not in my best interest. So I'm voting for people, for example, that elevate life, that elevate the unborn, that stand for biblical marriage between a man and a woman, that fights for religious freedom, that understands that the justice system needs to be tweaked because we have too many people being arrested and put in jail that look like me. I vote for people that support the family because the black family has been destroyed by the government and by the Democrats. Those are the things that I stand on. I vote for people that support school choice because the black community has been degraded educationally. I just heard a stat. Larry Elder gave this stat that I heard yesterday and it was disturbing. Uh, and the third reason is school choice. The Democrats are adamantly yes. opposed to school choice. Urban, er, urban education in America is a disaster. 85% of black eighth graders, these are 13-year-old kids, Megan, nationwide can neither read nor do math at grade level. In Baltimore, there are 13 public high schools. Say that again. Wait, just say that last stat one more time. 85% of black eighth graders nationwide, these are 13-year-old kids, can neither read nor do math at grade level. Did you hear that? Did you hear what has happened to education in the black community? Did you hear that? But you know the reason for that? Because people don't vote in their best interest. They only vote for people that look like them. They only vote for people that can persuade them with flattering words, people that they like. But they don't understand what representative democracy really is. They don't understand that these people work for us, not the other way around. We don't work for them. They work for us. And until we get that understanding, until we grasp that in America, and especially, especially in the black community, we'll continue to vote for things that are not in our best interest. Over and over and over again for the last 60 years, we voted for our own demise. We have cheered our own demise. And we've had these church plant pastors who have encouraged that because they are part of the black bougie elite. They are paid for that. They are paid, they are encouraged to tell us to keep us ignorant. They are paid to keep us ignorant from what a representative democracy really is. These people work for us. We don't work for them. Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, your mayor, your governor, they all work for you. We need to get that in our minds. And if they work for you, if they don't represent you, if your community is worse off now than it was two or four or eight or 12 or 20 or 40 or 60 years ago, okay, you need to make a change. Don't just vote for the same thing over and over and over again. It does not work. It never works. But unfortunately, 
because they have dumbed down the populace, they have dumbed down Americans through education, through these indoctrination facilities where they want to teach you about gender and sexuality instead of teaching you about arithmetic and writing and about civics. People don't think. People have been dumbed down. Why do you think there's a lack of creativity in America right now? Because people don't have the ability to think for themselves. They have stripped us of our agency, our God-given agency, and it's truly reflected in how we vote. So instead of voting for people that represent us, knowing that this is transactional, knowing that this person is representing us while they are there, not their own interests, not the interests of the corporations, not the interests of the lobbying group, but they represent us. Until we come to that realization, until we understand that these people are not up there for their interests, but for our interests, until we get that truth, until we get those facts settled in our hearts, we'll continue to get the same result over and over and over again. They'll continue to make us victims. We have to realize we live in a representative democracy. Those people represent us. And if they are not representing us accurately, we need to vote them out. Because we're not victims. We are empowered for greatness.